What is going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today I'm going to be launching a new series on this channel which is going to be focused on ARM development. So as you can see on your screen right now, I have the STM32 Discovery Board which features an, a Cortex F0 processor. So we're going to be doing essentially the Hello World application of ARM development by blinking two LEDs, one of which is on board of the development board and the other one is going to be uh, on the breadboard itself as we can see right now a uh, preliminary demo and uh yeah, if you guys enjoy the series, please make sure to hit a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. And let's just jump straight into the uh, tutorial. So ST Microelectronics actually developed this a very good uh, UI based uh, development tool, which is called the STM32 Cube MX. And it allows you to create a project which would be directly linked for your board. So we're gonna go through an MCU selector. So obviously there's different processors that you can select from if you're doing development from scratch. But the easy way is to go into board selector and then obviously select the vendor, select the type of board. Like I've mentioned, I have the discovery board, the MCU series. Again, it is the F0 and the particular MCU that I'll be using is the STM32 F051 R8 T6. So I'm going to make the appropriate selection, hit OK. And actually this is available for PC and Mac if you want to uh, do that on a different computer. But you have the full configuration of each one of your pins showing up on your screen right now. Obviously the power and the ground pins are yellowed out. Um, but uh, the I.O. that's available with this board straight out of the box is so you have two different buttons, one of, wh one of which is the blue pin, uh, blue push button on PA0. The other one is the reset button. And then you have two LEDs. Uh, you can see the green one blinking down below right here. And you have a blue LED, which is currently off on the board as well. So this uh, development tool offers you a lot of features. So you can create I squared C implementations. You can create timers. You can create US USART. Uh, protocols, you can do watchdog timers, real time uh, clocks, etc, etc, analog to digital converters. So a lot of capability, don't underestimate this tool. But what we're going to be doing today is fairly straightforward. We're going to click on this PC zero pin selected as an GPIO output. And as you can see, it puts a label on it makes it green. So if we go into configuration and click on this GPIO, uh, you're going to see the four pins that are configured. So the new one that we've added is PC zero. And then we have the two LEDs on PC eight and PC nine. I'm going to be selecting that and adding my own user label. So blue LED, and I'm going to be hitting apply. There's quite a few, you know, options that you can do uh, right off the bat, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, there's going to be two signals Hit apply. Okay. And uh, all of the other configurations, we're going to look at them in the uh, next videos, but uh, you can configure your clock from this um, development tool. You can do pretty much anything, but we're not, we're not going to be messing with that today. So the next step is going to be going into the project settings. We're going to do, uh, so we're going to call this LED blinking one. Uh, it's going to be saved into this directory, which I've already pre-configured. Tool chain. So we're going to be using Kale Arm V5. Very important to make that selection. Double check everything. Um, we're going to be copying only the necessary library files. Uh, everything else looks good. Advanced settings. No need to worry about that. Hit OK. And then we're going to hit Project Generate Code. And this should create the runtime application, which we're going to be editing in Kale V5, like I've mentioned earlier. So you're going to hit an open project and make sure you have the right version installed. If you have four, then make sure to hit four before you uh, build the project. All right. So once you have the project loaded onto Microvision, the first thing we're going to do is go into, go into our configuration of the flash tools. I'm going to navigate to this debug tab. And what's really important is to make sure that we're using the SD link debugger. This is actually the onboard um, debugger that is used to program our processor. So make sure you have that selected if you're using the same board. Hit OK. And then we're going to expand this project. Look for the applications slash user folder. This is where all of our code is going to go. 
And here you're going to find a main.c file, which is uh, essentially responsible for loading some of the configurations for the board, initializing some of the peripherals, and then initializing the GPIOs that we've selected in MX Cube. Um, so down below you will see a wild one, which is essentially the same function that you have in Arduino that runs over and over. And you have this uh, very nice commented out section, especially to put your code in. So like I've mentioned, we have two outputs to toggle and we're gonna do so on a timer. So I'm gonna write two, uh, a couple of lines of code. So HIL GPIO underscore toggle pin. So this is a utility function made by uh, CubeMX which makes it extremely simple uh, for you to kind of use different pins gpio underscore pin underscore nine so the green led that you see on the board right now is on pin nine and the other one is going to be on pin zero of the of the same port so it's going to be gpio toggle pin gpio c comma gpio underscore pin zero and uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing this off a delay function, not the most efficient way, but that's uh, just going to be for demonstration purposes should work just fine. So this is pretty much all of your code that you need to toggle based off an internal clock. And what I'm going to do right now is rebuild the code, make sure that everything is compiling. Let me give you some more. Uh, information there but um, once the code is compiled we can go ahead and load that into uh, our processor everything looks good and as we can see both of the LEDs turned off turned off and that's because you need to reset uh, you need to reboot the controller before your code executes so I'm gonna hit this black button right here and as you can see the LEDs are now blinking based on this 200 millisecond interval so very straightforward, yet uh, very powerful uh, Hello World application for the ARM processor. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. I also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that I left for you with uh, extra content. Last but not least, leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos, questions about this topic or otherwise. Uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time.